presented by Church Tech U, it's the ProPresenter Show. Today, I'm going to teach you all about what's new in ProPresenter 7.9. Hi, and welcome again to the ProPresenter Show. This is the show where I teach you all about ProPresenter, of course. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, if you really enjoy this show or just really are excited about all the new features that they've added in ProPresenter 7.9, go ahead, give me a thumbs up, follow, subscribe, click the bell icon, you know, all that stuff you do. So one of the things that is really impressive about Renewed Vision, since they changed their business model from selling software and selling a new version every three or four years is they've pivoted to having new versions all the time. And those new versions are filled with new possibilities. And ProPresenter 7.9 is no different. So let's head over to my computer. I'll give you an overview in this tutorial. And then in subsequent tutorials, we'll talk about some of the details about all the things. So. Here we are in ProPresenter 7.9, and you're probably already noticing some changes. Uh, first off, the audience and stage buttons here are no longer red dots and green dots. It's a red circle and a green dot. Now, I don't know for sure, but I have a suspicion that the reason that they have changed this is so that um, when you click on this, there's a very striking difference between when it's off and when it's on, even if you're colorblind. So um, there's someone in my Church Tech U group who is colorblind, and he said, yep, in fact, it makes it nice and easy because an unfilled-in circle is a different shape than a filled-in circle. So that's the first thing. Secondly, Notice here, we've got this uh, worship um, icon up here, and uh, it says worship on mine because that's the label of the current look. So that's something that they've added. Also, they moved the live video uh, indication, whether you're live streaming, recording, or both. They've moved that from down here underneath up here to the icon bar. So that's just some of the different interface changes that they've made. They've also made some changes to NDI. So with um, NDI, which is a technology that allows you to send video over the network, you used to be locked into just the standard resolutions. That's changed along with the ability to have groups of NDI things, uh, NDI sources that you uh, can play with. So that's something else that's changed. One of the big changes, though, is they've also added the ability to control um, ProPresenter with a couple of different technologies. So they have a new API. If you're not a programmer, you might not know what that is. Basically, imagine that it's a new set of commands that you can send from one network device to ProPresenter. It used to be that this did exist, but it was um, a little more difficult to find. And so you had to do some detective work. But now that it's published and obvious, um, that's something that a lot of people can use to write different apps to control ProPresenter. Also, they have announced two other ways to control ProPresenter. Thing one is uh, an app for the Stream Deck. So I have the Stream Deck software on my computer. And if I bring this up, over here. This is just an example of the different icons that you can have in uh, the Stream Deck software to control ProPresenter. So we'll go over those in a future tutorial. And I'll tell you the positives and negatives of using the Stream Deck software 
as opposed to companion, which I've told you about in other different tutorials. Finally, last but certainly not least, is they've um, added a couple of other ways to control ProPresenter. First off, I can't show you this because, as it turns out, it's still in beta. But it is a web page where you could go put in your uh, IP address for your ProPresenter computer, and then you can control ProPresenter remotely from just a regular web page. I'm pretty sure, I haven't tested this out yet, but I'm pretty sure that that means that someone with a Chromebook could control ProPresenter. Pretty neat. Also, uh, you wouldn't need necessarily the uh, Pro Remote app to get some pretty intense control of ProPresenter. And one more thing, if we go into ProPresenter, uh, Preferences, and then Devices, this is one minor little thing, but for some of you, you're, you may not have even needed, knew that you needed this, but they have added a note right here to clear the announcement layer. So something else that they've added to make controlling ProPresenter uh, easier than ever before. So that's all the changes in ProPresenter 7.9. If you like this content, I bet you'd like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course. So head on over to tdm.fyi slash pro7quick. Give me your name and email address so I can make a login for you. And then we will, um, I'll show you just all the cool stuff that ProPresenter 7 has to offer. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.